book done. <laughs> Me too. I've read it. I mean, I've read it a bunch, but it's one of those books that has so much detail in it that it really doesn't matter if you read it every five years. You're going to forget stuff. Hello! That is true. Yeah, you didn't do the And email. welcome to... Yeah, I decided we're not doing that anymore. No. Whose no. book? Beidecker. Don't do it. He did it. See? Hello and welcome. To the Booze Book Beidecker. I'm Christina. He's not Christina. And I'm, Christina. I'm Josh. <laughs> <laughs> is it, that sounded like a drunken ogre. So I want to just sit outside of my hobbit hole and wait for a wizard to show up. I would love to. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. Yeah. Just don't invite him for tea because then you eat like 12 dwarves. Yeah, that's a lot of dwarves. It is. But somehow we eat enough food, which I don't get. I guess it's because he's a hop and he eats a lot. <laughs> Wait, let's name all the dwarves. Because I get confused oh, about, no. it was it that they had 13 dwarves and that Gandalf knew that sometimes he wasn't going to be with them, so they had to have 14 without him? Or do they have to have 14 with him? See, I don't I thought know. it was 14 because they got all scared of 13. Right. No, I get it. But, I'm confused. But, was he scared of 13 dwarves or was he scared of 12 dwarves plus Gandalf? Like, do you know what I mean? Because Gandalf straight up knew he wasn't going to be there a lot. Well, he was there a lot. Yeah. But he knew there were spells he wasn't going to be there. Uh, I got the impression they were just trying to avoid the unlucky number 13. Or But why they went to 14 instead of 12, I don't know. Okay, so, so wait. We got Thorin. We've got Boren. We've got Bofur. Mm -hmm. We've got Keely and Feely. Mm -hmm. We've got... Feely, the creep. Oh, and it, why is Feely creep? Because <laughs> his name. Oh, Feely? Yeah. Like Mr. McFeely? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with Mr. McFeely, but Dwalin. we all know it was a really bad name. Dwalin. He was the yeah. first one. But I stopped counting on my fingers already. Oh. Well, either way. There were a lot of dwarves, and there was a somewhere dozen, there least. was 13, and that was bad, so we had to make it 14. Yeah. And by we, I mean Gandalf and company. It still turned out it was bad luck. What do you mean? They had tons of good luck. Well, people died. Well, come on. And it they was... ran into trouble every corner they turned. But they were pretty much just happy that everybody didn't die because this task set out before them was just like insurmountable and they knew everyone was going to die and then most people didn't die. So I would say it was pretty lucky. I guess. You know what? I guess. Was... Maybe I'm a pessimist. Maybe you are, <laughs> Mr. Half Empty. So there's a lot of different elves, right? We've got wood elves. We've got mm -hmm. um, high elves. Mm -hmm. We've got half elves. It's true. I, and that's one thing I forgot. Wood elves are jerks, by the way. <laughs> what else just like <laughs> lock you up and are like, yeah. why are you getting in the way of our merrymaking? They have awesome bonfires, and then if you try to join them, they just abduct you and throw you in a cell. Yeah, but only if you do it three times. That's true. <laughs> well, they got Thorn the first time, didn't they? No, they got Thorn. See, the, I, was, I was a little foggy in that because... There, we were told how many elves were hanging from the spider mm -hmm. sacks or whatever you want to call Webs? them. Webs? Yeah, they're, they're web prisons. Don't get stuck in a web prison. But if you do, make sure you have a hobbit with you who has a magical ring and an elven sword called yeah, Biter. I mean, that's not too too much to ask for. Not, that... No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it Sting, by the Sting. way? Sting. Yeah. Wait, which one was Biter? You're right. You are right. There was one called Biter, though. That must have been um, one of the goblin killing out swords. Well, I remember Thorn got, what is it, Orchrist or however you say that? Yeah, I think you said right. And then Gandalf had, it was like Magdalene or something. I don't know. Oh, okay. So I'm thinking of something completely different. <clears throat> I just straight up got it wrong. There were a lot of things to keep track of there in were. here. Look at all the notes I have. <laughs> oh, Bill, sorry. I totally destroyed your book. Sorry about that. Hope you're not too upset. The spine is broken. No pen. It's just pencil. And look, they come off. Bill, don't look at me that way. It's okay. Look, they come off. Wee. <laughs> it's so you know, dog-eared. <laughs> I asked for one of the Game of Thrones book for my birthday like three years ago. And my girlfriend at the time like wrote love notes in between like everything yeah and it actually kind of pissed me off and that's the story <laughs> <laughs> i was like there's no resale value <laughs> or either one of you yeah <laughs> but it was kind of a sweet sentiment anyway <laughs> kept me reading um <laughs> So yeah. Trolls. We gotta talk about the trolls. Oh, I love the trolls. The trolls. I think it's mostly because they speak Cockney. 
Well, I love it. I am married to a very kind, wonderful man named William. And the one troll who wanted to let the hobbit go, kind soul that he is, named William. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I like the trolls. There you go. But then they got duped. They got duped by Gandalf. I know Gandalf was out like making it sound like it was the trolls talking to each other just to kind of draw out the evening. Our director would like some more wine to draw out the evening so that they would turn to stone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so they were eating mutton. And I imagine like uh, mutton chops, but do you think they were just like eating whole sheep like a mutton chop? Yeah, yeah. Think of the most detestable thing and that's you what the trolls will. were doing. Right? I suppose. I suppose. It's like how we eat shrimp. It's pretty lucky how the key fell out of the troll's pocket before they turned to stone. It's a lot of luck. A lot this of whole suspension thing. of disbelief because you know the whole tale was so believable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never met a Goblin King that I don't worry. <laughs> yeah, they killed the Goblin King. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's like the first thing they did. They got interrogated and then the fire went out and then they all started on fire and then they died. Or he died. Oh. And Bilbo, by the way, always gets knocked unconscious in this book. I know. Because he's super clumsy. <laughs> <laughs> Gollum. Like, if you fall from a dwarf, you, I mean, that can't yeah. be that big of a fall. How right. do you get knocked out? Yeah. And who was the one who was always carrying him? And he would always get blamed for leaving uh, the bag behind. Did it start with a B? It definitely started with a B. <laughs> <laughs> but now you have, like, five to choose Yeah, exactly. From. Five. Uh, <laughs> Five. That's. I know. Okay. <laughs> I'll give that to you. So should I go through the twelve steps? Yeah. Is that still if a thing? And you, you know, let's do it. You should. A lot of post production in this episode. I see that not only do you have twelve steps, but then you have sub bullet points that go down sometimes to the letter G. Yeah. I've been drinking a lot of coffee, so. I've been drinking a lot of wine. I noticed you're not drinking with us, so this is just the episode where Christina's drunk, huh? How would Bilbo Baggins feel about this? I'd probably get knocked unconscious, wake up, and it would already be solved. <laughs> <laughs> but like, he, is, that a, is that a creative thing to do, or just... He got knocked out a lot <laughs> in the beginning, this. but like the second half of the book, it was all about Bilbo. Bilbo was making everything happen. Yeah, but the Battle of Five Armies, I would have loved like 500 pages of awesome description of... Wargs, eagles, goblins, all these races colliding, but instead Bilbo gets knocked unconscious, wakes up and the battle's over, and then he finds out what happened. That's true. That's true. Which kind of annoys me. Talk to us about the Arkenstone dash. <laughs> the Arkenstone? Yeah. So that's the main thing that Thorin wants to get. Like, he wants all his treasure, but he really prizes the Arkenstone. I'm not exactly sure why, to be honest. But Bilbo... Burglars that burgles. Burgles. He's a he burgles. Burgles. <clears throat> the Arkenstone. Um, and Thorin's all searching for it, all pissed. And then Smog goes and destroys Lake Town. Lake Town's like, oh, you owe us, and you have a bunch of money in that mountain. So then the Elf King comes that helped him originally. Helped him. Well, I guess by locking them up, that's not really helping. <laughs> but they're well, well fed. fed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so then they besiege the Lonely Mountain. Um, and <laughs> I always think of Lonely Island when I say Lonely Mountain, but anyway. You always think of what? Lonely Island. What's it's Lonely Andy Island? Andy Samberg's, like, sketch group or whatever. Oh, they I'm make all those music videos. Not familiar with it. But anywho, Bilbo puts the ring on, gives the Elf King the Arkenstone so they can barter and get money to pay for the rebuilding of Lake Town and all that. So then Thorin agrees to give him one fourteenth of the treasure, and they're all happy. But as far as what the Arkenstone actually does, I have no idea. It's pretty. Just like the ring. I uh, I was in Quebec What's while I was reading one? this book, and I got this, so I caught my Arkenstone, just so I can kind of tie it to when I read the book. And it's pretty, too. <laughs> I don't know that it's worth, you know, one fourteenth of a Over dragon's which? hoard. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> it kind of sucks because they shoot down. He sh bard shoots down the dragon, hits him in the weak spot. Yeah, because he's got a diamond encrusted belly, except for this Heck one yeah. spot. Or is it cubic zirconia? 
just kidding. No, Token said it was <clears throat> diamonds. I, I believe know. him. Because but he shoots down the dragon, and then, like, the world. fall of the dragon destroys the whole town. What are you going to do? So that guy needs dragon insurance. Dragon insurance. Adventurer insurance. Maybe. Well, really, don't we all need dragon insurance? I mean, it sounds know. like a pyramid scheme to me. Okay, so let's talk about Gollum. <laughs> Because I love the description of Gollum. And I know, you know, I, I think probably just because the Lord of the Rings movies were so popular and the thing and everything that people get really into that one chapter with, you know, with Gollum. Mm -hmm. What is that chapter called? It's called, like, um, it's called something good. Hang on. Hang on. It is called, it's not out of the frying pan. And, oh, Riddles in the Dark! Riddles, Riddles in the Dark. Riddles in the Dark. Um... But I like how, you know, so he goes down, he goes down until there's a lake and you know, his little knife isn't glowing mm -hmm. anymore. And the reason nobody goes down there is because whenever they send goblins down there, they never come back. Yeah, they get eaten. Because Gollum freaks out goblins. Because he puts on the ring and it comes up behind him and he twists his neck. Yeah. And he eats him like a bonefish. Yeah. So... Bilbo was really lucky because when he first meets Gollum, mm -hmm. Gollum had just eaten a goblin, so he was not hungry. So he was willing to play games with Bilbo and all that, but then soon he just kind of was like, no, nah, I want to eat this guy. And where's my ring? And oh. I'm really pissed. And yeah. now I'm crazy. <gasps> Bilbo cheated. That's not a... But he didn't Asking mean... what's in your pocket isn't a riddle. Yeah, but he didn't mean to because he was just like, because he had the ring and he felt the ring and he's like, what's in my pocket? He was talking to himself, but then Gollum interpreted it as a riddle. And gotcha. then Bilbo just went with it. Yeah, but it's still not honorable. <laughs> yeah. he, he didn't deny it. He didn't say, he, he thought he was going to get out here on a loophole. I mean, he totally was off his game, his riddle game to begin with. <laughs> Yeah. So he just, yeah, he just grasped at straws at that point. Bilbo is not a gentleman. What's that nasty little hobbit got in his <laughs> pockets? And then he like rows out to that island, looks for the ring. Yeah. Comes back, gets all mad, and then shows Bilbo how to get out of the Misty Mountains. Not intentionally, yeah. And then Led Zeppelin made that song. Oh. The Misty Mountain Hop. Oh, I don't know about it, or if I do, I just don't know what the title is. There's actually a lot of Lord of Rings references in Led Zeppelin lyrics. Oh, really? Well, Maybe they're watching this show right now. <laughs> I don't think that's my favorite chapter. Oh, really? I thought... My favorite is when they're in Mirkwood, and the yeah. elves are there, and then they ride out on the wine barrels. Uh, it's pretty fun. Yeah, the wine, the wine barrels are good. I didn't like that forest. The forest freaked me out. And spiders. Yeah. I'm a big fan of spiders. Ugh. Ugh. And everything felt so hopeless. That's and true. then was it Bomfur who fell in the river and then he was they had to <laughs> carry him for feeling. like days? Yeah. And he was the heaviest guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was a bummer. The Battle of Five Armies is basically like the culmination of every group that they ran into throughout yeah. their adventure. Yeah. And then they all want the treasure that they went to get, right? Yeah. Okay. Bjorn, they haven't talked about Bjorn. Bjorn! Half bear, half man. I liked him for his cream and honey. Yeah. He's got good cream and honey. <laughs> I mean, he is half bear. I feel like he can... What did they say? Sniff they out say? some good honey. <laughs> <laughs> but then he comes and he's... Yeah. Gandalf thinks he was, like, born of the mountain. Whatever that means. Yeah, what the hell does that I mean? I don't know. Like, did he used to, it makes sense if he was like half rock, half man. <laughs> Last time I checked, mountains aren't made out of bears, so I'm not sure. Mountains. We have Misty Mountain, we have Lonely Mountain, mm -hmm. we've got... Mirkwood. Mirkwood, we've got Bag End, we've got, uh, what else we got? Hobbiton, Rivendell. Rivendell, Rivendell was Elrond? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, he deciphered the map and everything. And Elrond's half elf. <clears throat> Because he, he was like half elf, half man. See, that was never clear to me until I read this book. Like, when I say clear, you know. I I'm thought like, he was full elf. I don't think he's full elf. Because he has a brother who's also half elf, but his brother kind of swore allegiance to being a man. So oh. he kind of had to decide. Hmm. So, yeah. 
country's named? Rivendell? Rivendell. That's where Archie and Veronica are, right? What? What? Are you talking about the Archie? Jughead? Jughead? Are you talking about <laughs> Betty? <laughs> Mr. Weatherby? We are not talking about the Archie comic books right Ms. now. Miss Grundy? <laughs> I don't get Dilton the... Doily? I love Dilton Doily. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> Moose? I don't Moose? Know. I don't know. Okay, Midge. so I I <laughs> tagged a lot of stuff. I'm gonna read Pops. That. I'm gonna read something I tagged, okay? Do it. Okay. Gandalf thought of most things, and though he could not do everything, he could do a great deal for friends in a tight corner. Aww that's a good one. Maybe. That sounds like he's scapegoating though. Like he's not that good of a wizard, so he's a good friend. <laughs> well is I mean Gandalf, I mean, Gandalf is good with relationships, and he's good at, like, lightning, you know, like, explosions. Force lightning. Is he really good at much else? No. I, well, mean, I, at, I mean, I know his epic, he's like, good at later in his career, lead. You Shall Not Pass, but that was just, like, the culmination of, like, the most epic lightning show ever. He's good at making smoke ships. With his, when he's, yeah, the rings. Organization? That's well. That's, <laughs> he's definitely the project manager. He's a born leader. <laughs> <laughs> but then he always leaves at the most inopportune times. He's like, he's I like can't oh, be Merkwood. Yeah, I'm not going in there. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> you suggested this route, mm. and then they don't go through that route. On I know, their way it, back. and it turns out that they couldn't go through that route, anyways, because it's kind of described because. Um, Bilbo sneaks out while his friends are locked up. He sneaks out a few times and learns that you couldn't have really gone through that way anyways. So they made it the most efficient way they could have possibly made it. So that's nice. <clears throat> True. And it, well, yeah, because they went on the Northern Pass, and I think Gandalf actually went on the Southern Pass to defeat the Necromancer, which is actually Sauron. Is that what he was doing? Mm -hmm. With a bunch of wizards. How do you know that? It's, it's explained at the end of the book. Oh. Like, Where I was kind of drunk. You keep leaving at the end of the book. That's all right. So tell me more about that. That's really all it is. Okay. <laughs> he explains that he was fighting a necromancer, and that it was the Dark Lord Sauron, and they pushed him back to Mordor, basically. What's step nine? Step nine. <laughs> step nine is go through treasure wall. Smog terrorizes Lake Town, which I thought was hilarious. So <clears throat> Smog gets all upset. That he's missing a goblet that Bilbo stole just to prove that the treasure is still there, I think. Yep. And then he flies off, and they don't know where he is. So then all the dwarves go in and start plundering all their treasure. All while he's, like, destroying an entire village, which I thought was hilarious. Hilarious and a, gosh, you guys are not nice. Yeah, they? exactly. But then again, what were they supposed to do? Well, I mean, they treated them like kings when they went into Lake Town. Treated who like Venom, kings? The dwarves yeah. and Bilbo. Yeah, yeah. Because he had to, or he was oh, the yeah, when son they, of Thror. Yeah. Thror, right? And he, they got a big welcome. I like that part where the um, the raft men, the elvish raft men, were mm -hmm. like, "Uh oh, maybe our king made a bad decision." I thought that really, even though it was like one line in the book, I thought it really spoke volumes about how the el the elf king's people thought about him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No, oh, absolutely. He's not a very good leader. At least what I got out of it. Those blue collar Throwing elves. people in jail. <laughs> Those blue collar elves don't appreciate him. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought a really cool part of the book was when they after the trolls they went into the cave, got a bunch of swords, and everyone had a sword that had a name and like a lineage and a story behind it, except for Bilbo who got a sword, which still, you know, <laughs> was an awesome sword. But then um he it didn't get named until after Bilbo kinda grew into his role in the party and became heroic instead of kind <laughs> of the guy the who, guy who just sat in the back and complained about second lunch I thought that was, was really cool uh, just killing those spiders just killing those spiders oh yeah he's going to town and what was the name of his knife sword oh god sting sting he later gives that to frodo this is my favorite because I'm just weird and twisted. So when 
when his friends are in the barrels and he's just like hanging out and goes and steals some supper and he's just like walking along, you know, and he's breathing the fresh air and he's thinking, oh, I don't know if my friends are alive or dead, but he's just kind of mellow and zen and not worried about anything. What the hell was that about? <laughs> yeah, that's Schrodinger's dwarf. <laughs> amazing <laughs> i really like the lord of the eagles because i imagine he's like really regal and pompous right <laughs> lord of the eagles the prisoners yeah. and they find out that they're not the birds prisoners they were the goblins exactly prisoners. but it's kind of cool when they're sitting in the tree and you basically think they're all screwed because there's fires yeah. licking up the side and then the eagles i know you think they're screwed but you're like man there's a lot of book left <laughs> yeah they, they're obviously not gonna die here <laughs> I mean, there were armies. so many. What's the literary term? Deus ex machia. Is that it? Is that the literary term? Maybe. Close enough. What does that translate to? <laughs> I think it. Greek. I think it's like. <laughs> isn't it like God out of a box or something Theater. like that? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's God out of a box. So it's just. Well, like it's that. the machine. It's like they had a physical machine in Greek theater that would come in and like drop down the solution and. You know, some guy who would like take away the evil and then hmm. I don't forget how the machine worked. I don't know. <laughs> Break but a it was, leg. It was an actual That's device. A physical okay. piece of machinery. So what did you think about how the book ended, Josh? What do I think of how it ended? Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> I don't know. I mean it was okay. It didn't wrap anything up. Well, it actually kinda did. So where are we at the very, very end? Where are we? Yeah. Well, Thorn gets mortally wounded. Keelan <sighs> and Feely are dead. Mm. And Dane comes and becomes the king out of the mountain. Dane, who was Thorin's cousin? Yeah, yeah. I believe so. Yeah. I'd have to double check. But yeah, when they were bartering, <clears throat> so when Thorn was bartering with the elf king in the Lake Town residence, he gave him the Arkenstone and... Or no, he got the Arkenstone back from him in exchange for one fourteenth of the treasure that the dragon was sitting on. And he was also hoping that his friend Dane, who was marching to the mountain that he just reclaimed, would get there before the Elf King and the Lake Town people got back to Lake Town and forcibly take all that back. So he's a jerk. Which one's a jerk? Thorn. Thorn. I thought they were all jerks. He apologizes at the end, though, so that's kind of cool. That's good. You know, it takes a big person to apologize. But the big... Yeah. I, I don't know. What don't you I don't know? know how I feel about the ending. It seems like a standalone book, and then all of a sudden Lord of the Rings comes up. It is a standalone book. Well, I know, but it's just kind of weird. It is a standalone book, but I don't know about the order it was written in. Was this actually written before Lord of the Rings? I think so. Because I know, it, you know, it's like a prelude, too, but you can... You can say that, but you don't know if the first edition said that. <clears throat> True. So, I was just wondering. I thought it was, like, but yeah, I'm not 100% on that. When I was in fifth grade, this was the one you were supposed to read. Although, honestly, I, I think this is... There's a lot of detail in here. And it's also one of those books where you don't really appreciate the little things until you've read it, like, the fifth time. Like... You know, I think the first time you go through, you're like, elves are elves, and oh, all those elves must know each other. And then by like, you know, third time you read it, you're like, oh, okay, so these elves don't all really get along. They're kind of in their own little factions. Mm -hmm. And you know, you got your woodland elves, and elves you got are your high clicky. elves. Elves are clicky. High school. What's up high with school that? Elves. Yeah. So. But they were the first race in the Middle Earth. How do you know that? Was that in the book? No. No. So how do you know that? Through the lore. J.R.R. Tolkien. In the lore. Have you the read lore. the other books? The Silmarillion, I tried to. But that's really hard. Silmarillion, I didn't think that he actually wrote that. I thought that was his son <clears throat> after he died. It's a bunch died. of notes that uh, yeah, he that had it, laying around that he yeah. compiled into a book, I think. And his son like filled in the holes, which is cheating. That's not really a J.R.R. Tolkien book. Come on. Can't have other people filling in the holes. That's true. That's how I feel about that. Strongly. <laughs> Would you recommend this book? Well, yeah, who doesn't recommend The Hobbit? Everybody's read The Hobbit at least once. Sometimes That's true. you've read it five times. Sometimes. I think, I don't think I have. Probably three. Yeah. Probably three, and, but yeah, it's a great I, book. I felt like I was reading it for the first time, though. You know, because really? there's so much, well, not the first time, but you know, there's so much detail that you just completely forget. 
So yeah. it wasn't like, oh, I read this. <laughs> Which can happen sometimes. Not with All this book. Not with this book. <laughs> All right, well, that's the episode, I think. Well, this is about like our anniversary episode. <laughs> so in conclusion... <laughs> Read The Hobbit! Read The Hobbit and also read The Dinner. And The Left-Handed Darkness. And we'll see you next time. Indeed.